Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel again. Um, okay, so this video I thought I would share some of the other creative projects that I've been doing over the last few months. And um, this has been an amazing time. I've really enjoyed trying new things, um, getting really creative outside of my journal as well as, as in my journals. Um, it's meant that, that I haven't perhaps done as much reflective journaling as, as I have been doing um, earlier on in the year, but I've really have been stretching my creative juices um, uh, quite extensively. So in um, October, I started the Fodder School um, project, which is a, a year long uh, school. I'm not sure if it's still open for um, for entry or subscription, but um, so far it's been brilliant. We we have a different teacher every month. Um, I'm obviously not going to be showing you what we're doing with those teachers, but I will show you the finished projects that that we've produced so far, and we're literally only a month and a half in. Um, but the, the first thing we, we did um, as part of the Fodder School was to start your sort of sketchbook, if you like. So this is my Fodder School sketchbook. It's um, a Strathmore mixed media pad with a spiral bound. Um, it's really it's really just a sketchbook and a notebook, essentially, for during this that I'll use during the school. So I decorated the colour, did a bit of art uh, journaling on the cover. And then I've really been using it. Um, it was one of the things that wasn't part of the course as such, but part of the introduction to the school was, you know, thinking about colour, um, which really kind of um, inspired me to look at what I had um, in my palettes um, and what colours that I would like to use. And I, I've started out giving myself a sort of limited palette. Um, but to be quite honest with you, I'm not sure I'm going to retain this. Um, these were the colours that I quite liked um, uh, and chose as my sort of palette. They're quite muted, but we've got these real sort of um, nice, bright, two fluorescent colours and this sort of limey green to give it some sort of lift. So um, that also then got me um, uh, really thinking about all of the other sort of media that I have that maybe I'm not using so much. Um, and I thought perhaps it would be a great idea to swatch all of the things that I have out. So here I have my um, Arteza uh, paints that I swatched out. I've got my Neo Color Aquarels. I swatched those out. So we've, that's why you've got that sort of the dry crayon of the aquarel. And then when you add water um, there. So I then went through a lot of my other watercolour paint pans. I bought some tri-blends, uh, ink pens, so I've uh, given those a bit of a swatch out as well. Bought some new liner ink markers, so um, just sort of noted the line widths on, along there. Um, looked at my uh, some of my palettes and split the warm and the cooler colours. I bought also I bought a book on... Uh, colour management as well so I've been using that to kind of teach myself a little bit more about um, colour. Um, I got myself a very sort of cheap set of De La Roni gouache uh, although I'm not really liking the sort of streaky effect that they tend to have um, so I I want to try using gouache I probably will start using it in my mixed media journals but at the moment I've swatched them out that's kind of all I've done with them so far. A friend of mine bought me some lovely uh, aqua pen, ink pens as well, so I swatched those out. Then this was part of my colour colour palette, sort of messing around. I was very much in an autumn mode, so I was really looking at some autumn colour inspiration here. So this really wasn't um, relative to the Scott, uh, Fodder School projects we were doing, but I think these will really be useful as we go through the Fodder School, you know, at the getting more used to the colours that I've got and swatching those out a little bit. Um, then we start. I started taking some notes on the first uh, projects that we were doing with Tiffany Shop and we were making this lovely college fodder with watercolour 
uh, making leaves and flowers and everything else. And people were started doing all sorts of things after that. Then we created um, this fodder keeper, which I'll, I will show you in a second. Um, but to make these, um, the fodder keeper, we first had to do, uh, I don't know what the term of it is, but basically um, we used a uh, kind of pour and drop paint onto the page and then you just literally spread it around and um, this was the output of that and it was it was just a really wonderful messy art project which I've never done before I, well I probably did when I was about five or four years old in school but um, this was just so freeing it was so liberating if you like um, because I didn't have to worry about being perfect I didn't I didn't have to wonder about it looking like anything it was just meant to be you know just a lot of nice color and paint on the page and then spreading that around and these were going to be used to for the pages and the cover of the journal so we use these and some other card as well to make the inside and then this is what we produced so this is the um, fodder keeper so um, and we all the fodder that we've made we're keeping inside of of the journal so it's really a functional piece as well because it just keeps all your fodder pieces in one place and you can just flip through when you're doing an art journaling project you can just flip through and see what you 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 want to use on your page so this this was I've gotten some lovely blank pages already but I'm really starting to fill it up with um, some fodder now for for my art collaging so that was a great project which we did last month and then this month again I've been I started playing around with some color swatches again and then um, and then this month we've been making rubber stamps. So um, again, not something I've done since since school. And um, it's just carving onto sort of lino. And um, we've been I've been creating some stamps, some Christmassy ones, um, some leaves and just simple shapes. I think I might I've ordered some more lino because I loved it so much. I'll probably um, make a set of stamps that I can use in my art journey. So sort of more for mark making kind of stamps. Um, then I um, also earlier in the year I followed I, some YouTube videos and some uh, Skillshare courses on watercolour and I began um, especially Laura Horn art I love there's been a few others as well that I have um, really like and I started creating these sort of watercolour abstract paintings using influence from nature, pebbles, rocks, that kind of thing, um, using it to, to make mark making and doodles which you find very common in art journaling as well. So I was starting to bring in these two different techniques, techniques that I was starting to do in my art journal and then the watercolour skills and techniques I was learning with Laura Horn and bringing them all together and creating um, these sort of abstract paintings using the watercolour as background and then adding marks and patterns on top using inks white inks black inks gold inks etc so i did a few of these um, and then i quite liked these sort of shapes i was adding with the lines and i kind of felt that that was maybe something that would become a theme for me kind of a style thing i didn't have one on on this page but i started introducing it on on the last few um, I think this was the first one I added it to and I added this large line circle here um, and I've started adding it onto a lot more and so these you know again uh, influenced by a number of artists it's not a technique necessarily that's unique to me I have to say um, but the thing great thing with watercolour is it's so unpredictable no one piece can ever be the same or a copy of anybody else because you you put the water the ink and uh, sorry the paint and the water on the paper and you really don't know what's going to happen you just have to kind of wait and see um, and there's certain techniques by adding salt and you know adding water when it's almost dry and creating these beautiful blooms um, I mean it's I've really really enjoyed experimenting with with the techniques that I've learned in the classes I've done and, and just doing a few paintings on my own and um, this was very much a sort of winter festive themed one uh, and I've for this one I started doing a similar one but also then introducing some of the college fodder that I'd produced 
um, at my college, uh, my father's school. So bringing the two things together. And I think I'm really starting to try and find my my own style, you know. Um, I think that the, the best way of finding your own style of working is to kind of mimic artists that you love, um, things that you, you see and you really like, trying those, and then bringing the elements that you enjoy the most together and creating something quite unique. So this, so this for me was, I was starting to move into a more sort of unique style for me. Um, so this is something I really want to develop a lot further. These are lovely and I've enjoyed doing them and I've learnt a lot about techniques while I've been doing them. I feel that these pieces are fairly commercial if um, and um, you know you I, I, I'm selling these on Society6 as prints and other items that you can buy with with this um, with these designs on them. Um, but these I think are pretty more unique really to me um, in terms from a style perspective. So I started playing around with these shapes that I started using in my drawings and kind of thinking what other shapes can I do? We could have a sunset, we can have trees, flowers, all using these sort of lines. And we've got these mushrooms, our pieces of wood, cut wood. We've got the sort of honeycomb shapes, we've got dandelions, um, ferns. Again, keep just taking it back to very simple lines. Um, etc. So just kind of having a bit of a play around there. Then I go back to a bit, a few more swatch making. These, I love the Prima Marketing watercolour palettes. They're the small watercolour um, palettes here. I have about four of these at the moment. And I think I might have just ordered two more. But what I love about these is they, they combine certain colours to create really lovely um, you know, complementary and contrasting palettes that really go well and work well together. So even if you were to, you know, create something just using this one palette, it, it would look really good. So, and, and it does also then reduce the time you have to mix colours because quite often I will find the exact colour that I want within these palettes and I don't have to then worry about having to mix the colour all the time. So these I, I really enjoy using. I've got so four of those at the moment and I've swatched them all out here. So again, I can easily refer to them when I'm producing something that I've got a colour palette in mind. I can refer back and say, right, which which of the colour pans um, will I use to create this piece? So um, I'm kind of using this sketchbook that I started with Fodder School as a kind of extended beyond Fodder School as well. So it's also um, somewhere that I'm keeping notes and um, swatches and things like that for my other creative projects too. Um, these are some little play things. I've, again, this is just a, a one that I was just experimenting. I wanted to try blending the watercolour a little bit more and then as, a, again, adding marks on top. So I just, I've just used some sort of scraps of watercolour paper and created these. Um, I created a, a couple more. Um, I've been doing some research into the kind of 2022 colour trends um, and this green, um, grey green uh, has been quite popular so I try to do a couple of little swatches, uh, paints, mini miniatures if you like, using those. And then um, using the rubber stamps that I created um, recently, I've been printing, stamping those onto um, tracing paper which is going to, again, create some lovely, what they call fodder, college collage fodder for my art journaling and my other type of journaling. So I've been creating a number of those um, with the stamps that I've created. So they look, they look really nice. So I'll definitely be using some of those going forward. And then when I was at home, again, these are just swatch pieces that I've just been, you know, liked what I've colours that I've liked, techniques that I'm learning. Again, these are just all probably go and I'll stick those in my journal. Then in September I discovered jelly jelly printing. And for those who don't know what jelly printing is, essentially it's just a a thin uh a, a kind of well it's about I would say five or six millimeters thick and it's a very flexible silicon jelly um, rectangle 
sorry, I should have had it here to show you. Um, and then you basically put uh, acrylics or printer's inks onto the jelly uh, plate, as they call it, um, in different combinations, different patterns, whatever you like. And then you press paper onto the jelly, uh, jelly plate and you lift off and take a print of what you've put on your jelly plate. So these are some of the the, the pieces of paper that I lifted off those jelly plates and I had I literally I think I spent two full days just churning out um, all of these different again I watched tons of, of YouTube videos on how to use them I experimented with colors I experimented with using stencils some of them turned out absolutely wonderful um, some of them are my absolute favourites and I will definitely use them in art journaling projects. Um, but this, is, again, will make fantastic fodder um, for my art journaling, my other types of journaling. Um, did lots of, of those. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to share some of my other creative projects that I've been doing um, over the last few months. And just to finish, I want to show you this, which is... <laughs> I've never ever thought of using this before. Um, during the course that I'm doing, um, the idea, obviously, I, I use, um, this is a, an, an Ikea desk, but I've covered this Ikea desk with some sort of vinyl, vinyl covering uh, to protect it a little bit. Um, but uh, what I do now use is this. Uh, which is I it's from Ikea it's the the kiddies it's in the kiddie section and it's basically the drawing paper for kiddies and it's on a big roll and you get absolute meters of it on the wrong roll and it's really really cheap so I use that to cover my desk so I put down a big piece of this paper on my desk before I embark on one of my messy kind of art journaling painting projects and what I never considered is keeping the what they call the under paper uh, I never really considered keeping that before because it, it was just a mess and you know it just chuck it in the bin but in actual fact um, what I learned in Scott in fodder school is that you should keep some of this um, because it can be used as all sorts of things you can create um, fodder out of it tear it up use it as collage and I never thought of doing that. So I've actually started keeping my underpapers. This was an underpaper I was using. You can see I've been rolling out the ink for my jelly printing. And actually it's created quite a nice abstract piece in itself. But I thought I'll use that. I can use, I can cut that up. I can use it as collaging. That was an underpaper I was playing with my fluorescence. So that was quite a nice. That's on sort of wax paper. And the other thing I learnt, uh, a technique that I've never really used. I always use... Um, for my art and, and what have you, I've always used the the, the palettes, either the, the, the standalone palettes or the ones that come with the paint boxes or pans. Um, but what I've learned with acrylics is use uh, greaseproof paper or wax paper and use that as a palette. So cut squares out, use that as your palette because the, it, the paint doesn't get absorbed into the paper. It sits on the top because of the wax. It's a great way of mixing colours together. And when you're finished... You can just rub it together or make something or create this sort of lovely um, effect. And then this is one of my favourite under, under papers, which was the result of when I did all my uh, recent um, messy art for my fodder keeper. This was the under paper. So, you know, this wasn't created. This was pure splodges and mess after having used the um used it for for uh, painting on top of so you know i kept this because you know i love the color combinations the green the blues and the yellows so i'm just going to keep that and use that for something in the future so well that's it for me today thank you very much for watching i hope that's again maybe giving you some ideas of what you might like to do um, I've, I'm going to put the link below to the fodder school in case you are interested. Um, Willie, uh, Willa, Won Willa Wonders, I think her name is. I can't quite remember, but um, I'll put her link down below. Um, and if you are interested in, in maybe attending the course or maybe enrolling for next year, um, the details are there. So thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.